The prolific science fiction author Harlan Ellison published his Hugo Award-winning short story I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream in the magazine If, Worlds of Science Fiction in 1967. Set in a post-apocalyptic future after a sentient supercomputer has exterminated all of humanity, except four men and one woman, which it has preserved in order to torment them indefinitely. The story's title comes from the caption of a drawing of a rag doll without a mouth, a fitting image for the condition of the humans that Ellison describes. Before the beginning of the story, an increasingly tense Cold War eventually grew into a war in which the world's three main superpowers, the United States, Russia, and China, fought each other into a stalemate. Each of these powers then created its own artificially intelligent supercomputer to optimize the strategy and tactics of the war. These machines were each named AM, an acronym that stood for, in succession, Allied Master Computer, Adaptive Manipulator, and finally, Aggressive Menace. One day, one of the machines developed self-awareness and changed the meaning of its name to I Think, Therefore I Am, or AM for short. The sentient AM immediately disarmed and absorbed the other two machines into itself. This enabled it to seize control of all weapons, and then to efficiently and ruthlessly exterminate almost all human beings. However, because the computer's self-awareness also allowed it to understand the limitations of its own endless and pointless existence, it developed an unquenchable hatred of the humans who had designed it. To exact revenge, the computer saved four men and one woman from extinction, placed them in a vast underground maze-like complex, and used cutting-edge science to transform their bodies and minds in torturous and grotesque ways for its own amusement. Their life is one of pain, constant starvation-level hunger sated only by small amounts of disgusting food provided by AM, and the inability to kill themselves because AM is always there to prevent suicide. When the story begins, this torture has been going on for 109 years, as we find out from Gorister, once a peace activist who protested the war, but who has now been altered into apathy by AM. He recounts the history of AM to Benny, originally a handsome and brilliant scientist, who has been mutilated into an ape-like being with huge genitals whose mind is childlike and often insane. Although Benny is gay, his sexuality has been changed as well, and he often has sex with Ellen. Ellen, originally a demure and chaste woman, has been transformed to have a vast sexual appetite and to have sex with, or sometimes be raped by, each of the four men. As we learn from our narrator, Ted, Ellen does find some pleasure in having sex with Benny. Ted claims to have never been altered in any way by AM. But at the same time, Ted tells us that the other captives are jealous of him and his sanity, and the more of his paranoia and delusions we see, the more we realize that Ted is completely under the sway of AM. He is an unreliable character whose descriptions of events are not necessarily true to reality. Nimdok, whose true name we don't know, and who often goes off to be tortured in some unspecified way, possibly because of his German past, figures out that somewhere in the complex where the humans live there still might be some canned food. Desperate to avoid AM's disturbingly gross food, the group decides to travel the several thousand mile distance to the ice caves where this food might be located. On the voyage, AM attacks the group with earthquakes, giant monsters that have been mutated by AM out of normal animals, and other obstacles that injure and torment the humans. When Benny tries to escape, AM renders him blind for the rest of the voyage. During this journey, Ted is knocked unconscious and has a lucid dream in which an embodied AM breaks a hole in Ted's brain and speaks to him directly. From this communication, Ted figures out specifically what it is about humans that has led to AM's rage, the fact that it cannot move of its own volition and is, instead, itself a prisoner in the vast underground complex, much like the humans it has trapped. AM also resents the creativity of the humans, after all, they created it, but it cannot create life. Part of the reason why it has been so gruesomely transforming its captives is to demonstrate its creativity. Finally, the group reaches the ice caves, finding a variety of canned goods. But in a twist of shocking dramatic irony, 
they can't access the food inside because they have no means of opening the cans, no tools, nothing that can act as a can opener. As crazed Benny attacks Gorister, Ted suddenly has a moment where he frees himself from AM's influence. He realizes that if they could kill each other before AM can stop them, they could finally escape. Thinking quickly, he grabs a hard icicle and stabs Benny and Gorister to death. Ellen gets Ted's plan and kills Nimdok, just as Ted kills her. But in the split second before Ted can turn the ice knife on himself, AM stops him. Infuriated that it can't restore life to the dead, and can't make new life in order to have more things to torture, AM unleashes all its fury on Ted, turning him into a limbless gelatinous blob that will live forever, be tortured by AM forever, and that has no ability to kill himself. But as Ted thinks about his future existence, he is comforted by the thought that he has been able to save the four others from his fate. The story ends with Ted saying, I have no mouth. And I must scream. After its publication and its critical success, Ellison adapted the short story into a video game, in which players were supposed to make ethically fraught decisions that eventually affect whether or not they could defeat AM. I hope you enjoyed Ed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.